everyone. Welcome to Learning at Eleven Car. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the implication table method to perform state reduction. So suppose we have been given a state table, uh, as you can see on the left hand side, and we need to reduce this using the implication table method. So first of all, we frame our implication table in this manner, where we write out the rows starting from A to G, that is starting from state A, we go down all the way to state G, leave out the last state. And column wise, we write from state B to H. So leaving out the first state, we start from state B and go down all the way to state H. So this is written row wise and from A to G is written column wise. The shaded uh, squares over here are not going to be used. So basically, this table looks like a step, a staircase, rather. So now, the next step is going to be finding the squares which mark the states that are incompatible. A state is going to be, two states are going to be incompatible if their outputs are not same. So here, we have many such uh, states. So let's write out the list of such states comparing state A with C. So we have A and C. We have uh, A with E. We have A with F. We have A with H. Next, let's look at B. B with C is incompatible because their outputs are different. B with E F and H. So B with E, B with F, and B with H. Next, we can have state D. D with C, E, F, and H. So next, we have C, uh, sorry, state D with C, E, F, and H. Next, let's look at state G. Again, state G is not going to be compatible with state C, E, F, and H. So again, we have state G incompatible with uh, C, E, F, and H. So the squares that represent uh, these combination of states they are going to be marked as X. So that is invalid states, right? So let's see, we have A and C. So this is not compatible. A with E, A with F, and A with H. Similarly, B with C, B with E, B with F, and H. D with C, E, F, H, and D with C is over here. Then we have G with C, E, F, and H. So G with C, G with E, G with F, and G with H. So these are the states uh, that are actually incompatible. So therefore, uh, we are placing a cross over here. Once this is done, how do we fill up the squares of the implication table? So these are the steps. So the first step we've already completed, where we place the cross and squares whose states have different outputs. That step is complete. Now we begin from the top left square and we write the pair of the implied states. What does that mean? We just need to write the next states of that particular corresponding square. That means if I'm looking at this particular square, I have to write the next states of state A and state B over here. So let's go back to our state table. When we look at the state table for state A, the next state is G for x is equal to 0. And for B, the next state is F for x is equal to 0. So here we can write G equal to F and C equal to H. 
So these are the two implied states that are possible. In this way, we are going to fill up the blank squares available in the implication table. So let's look at A and D. So comparing A and D, we see that state A and D, we can write G is equal to A and C is of course C. So just write G equal to A. Then comparing A and G, looking at A and G, we can write A is equal to G. That is of course going to be correct because uh, we are actually scanning rows and column of A and G and therefore we place a tick mark over here. Now moving on to the next column B and D. So looking at B with D we can say F is equal to A and H is equal to C. F is A, H is C. Now I'm not saying that these are all valid uh, combinations or I'm not saying that F is equal to A is established yet. We have a few more steps that need to be performed after which we can eliminate that idea. So moving on, we can compare B with G and we say that uh, we have F is equal to A and H is equal to C again. Looking at column C with E. So C and E, we can say E is equal to C, D is equal to A. So what we are trying to say here is, knowing that the outputs are similar, there is a possibility that these states are going to be equivalent, provided their next states are equal. So we are just uh, writing out the next states, the equivalence of net, the possibility of the equivalence of next states in each of these boxes. In this step, in the next step, we will eliminate the invalid cases. So let's go ahead and fill up the rest of the squares in this manner. I have now filled up all the squares with the uh, corresponding implied states or the next states. And now we are again go to, going to scan each of these squares to check their validity. So let's go back and uh, check the step that we need to perform. So we have completed step two over here. We now need to scan each implied pair. And if there is a cross that is already placed on uh, the square corresponding to that pair, then we place an X on this square too. Now, what does that mean? So let's start with the first topmost square. Here we see G is equal to F has been written and C is equal to H has been written. So here, we need to check if uh, really G and uh, C and C, uh, are actually equivalent to F and H. So that can be found out by finding out the, the row G and F where they meet, right? So that is this particular square. We see this is F and this is G. So G equal to F is actually not true. So we should understand that g equal to f is not equivalent so we cannot say that this is a valid square so we place an x on this square too let's look at this one g equal to a so here let's look at the column a and the row g we see that here also we had obtained g equal to a and we are actually looking at the combination of g and a and therefore we had placed a tick mark over here because they were matching. So therefore, we don't place an X over here. This is equivalent. Moving on to this square. Here we say F is equal to A and H is equal to C. So let's scan F and A. That is this square. We've already placed an X over here, which means this is also not true. Moving on to the next square, F is equal to A and H is equal to C. Again, the same combination. So this is also not correct. This is also invalid. Let's scan this column. Here we have E is equal to C and D is equal to A. So looking at E and C. So there is already something written here. It is not crossed out. Looking at D and A. So A corresponding to D, yes, there is an equivalent state present here. There is no X placed over here. So therefore, we do not cross out the square. Moving on to the next combination, E equal to F. So E and F. 
So uh, let's look at the column F. Where is, yeah, so this one. And the next one is D equal to B. So D and B. So that would correspond to this particular column here. So here already we've placed a cross. Therefore, again, D equal to B is invalid. E equal to F is still okay because here E and F box was still open. But B equal to B is already invalid over here. So therefore, we need to place a cross here, which again implies that E equal to F also will not be a valid combination. So we can place a cross at E and F combination too. Looking at this one, E equal to C and D equal to G. So D with G is valid, E with C. So let's look at this. E with C, yes, this is also open. It's not crossed out. So therefore, this box is retained. Here we have uh, the combination A equal to G, which is a, a valid one. Because if you see, we've already placed a tick over here in the A and G box. And looking at this one, we have F and H. So here, in this box, we've placed F is equal to C. So let's compare F with C. So here we see that in that square, F and C combination square, we've already placed a cross. So this is also not going to be valid. So once we've completed scanning all of these squares, the uncrossed or unstriked out boxes will represent the equivalent states. I have now highlighted or shaded the squares that are not placed with a cross with green. So all these combinations that make up these squares, those states are equivalent, which means this particular square is made up with the combination of A and D. So A and D are going to be equivalent. This is made up with A and G's combination. So they are equivalent. Looking at this one, this square is made up with C and E's combination. This one is made up with C and H combination. This particular square is D and G, the combination of D and G. And uh, this particular square is combination of E and H. So these are the equivalent uh, states. So can I write? A is equivalent to D is equivalent to G and C is equivalent to E is equivalent to H. So this is what we obtain. Therefore, we can now rewrite this particular state table by removing the redundant equivalent states and replacing wherever they are uh, occurring anywhere else in the state diagram, replacing those occurrences with their equivalent states. So. Let's rewrite the state table now. So we have the present state, the next state with x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 and the output. So we can write A, B, C and F. That's because these are the only unique states. The others are all equivalent. Now A was actually making a transition to which state? Let's check. So let me bring down this table so that every time I don't have to scroll up. I'll place this table here. So here we see that our uh, state A is making a transition to state G and C. But uh, we know that G is equivalent to A. So I can write instead of uh, G over here, I'll write it as A and C. The output is 0. For state B, it is making a transition to state F and H. But we know that uh, state F is unique, so I'll retain it. But uh, state H is going to be equivalent to C, so I'll keep it as C. Now looking at state C, it is moving to state E and D. State E is equivalent to C and state D is equivalent to A. So the outputs have to be retained too. And lastly, looking at state F, it goes to F and B, both of which were unique. The output is 1. So this particular state table, the, this large state table with about eight states has been reduced to this small state table with just four states using the implication table method. So for a brief recap, 
what we do is we first find out all the incompatible states which differ from each other because difference is the output. So that is what we had enlisted over here. And once we find those, we place the x in the combination of those states. After this, we need to scan each of these boxes and write out the next states of the states that make up this box. So for example, the first state is made up with a and b. And therefore, we write out the next states assuming that they may be equivalent. In this manner, we complete the all the squares in this implication table and then we again scan and check if at all these are equivalent or not by finding out whether a cross has already been placed in that combination. So if it is look, if we are looking at G equal to F, so we look at the box with G and F. So that would be this particular box. Here already a cross is placed so this combination is not going to be possible. In this manner, we scan all of the boxes and from the final uncrossed boxes, we find out the equivalent states followed by writing out the reduced state table where we replace all the equivalent states, the redundant states with their actual equivalent states. So that's all with today's video. I hope the concept of uh, state reduction using the implication table method is uh, understood by you all. If you have any queries re regarding this, please do not hesitate to post it in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching.